Hi, I'm Eric Gadby, and I have been an enthusiast for all things nautical and aerospace since the age of 10. I served for 22 years in the U.S. Submarine Force and have been supporting it for the last 15 years since retiring. Join me as I pursue my passion for first-person context for ships, aircraft, and historic sites that have shaped our world, as well as some that are off the beaten path. Welcome to Heritage Hill Air Park, located on McCord Field on Joint Base Lewis-McCord, just south of Tacoma, Washington, home of F-106A Delta Dart, serial number 56-0459. Okay, so we're going to start the walk around of the F-106 Delta Dart. This is at the Joint Base Lewis-McChord McCord Field Heritage Air Park. And one of the first things you'll notice is the very large radome for the radar that is installed in the front. Uh, what's missing off this one is the uh, optical sight system. Uh, it's on the uh, F-102 that's uh, here at the park and I'll cover that here in a little bit. And I'm going to continue to walk around here. Obviously angle of attack indicator or sensor, sorry. And, and take a look up at the cockpit. I will put in at the end of this uh, the cockpit trainer that we have here at the museum to so you can see what the cockpit looks like. So the F-106 was designed from the ground up to only have missiles as its armament. Uh, later on they added the uh, option of having a uh, add-on gun in the uh, center uh, position here, but the missiles were on these trapeze that you see that I'm going to crawl down underneath here. So you have a trapeze mechanism that is pneumatically powered by a 3,000 pound air system that takes this piece that you see here, this, uh, I can't remember the actual term for it, but uh, there would be two missiles, one on each side, that it would pop down, allow them to fire the missile, and then off it went, and then pop back up in. You can see the actual uh, weapons bay doors. They are pneumatically operated as well. You can see the cylinders for it here and here. And I'm going to turn around and look back through. And once again, we have a second set of trapeze for the for the weapons. You'd see that uh, it comes down. And bolts down the same as the the one in the front and here's the operating cylinders for both the trapeze and for the, the doors themselves i'm going to turn around and let you get a good look at uh, the size of of it in here i'm six feet one and I'm standing flat-footed and my head does not touch the overhead in the, the weapons bay. And just to give you a minion for scale here. So this was a different setup than they had on the F-102. It had three different a left, center, and right bays. The F-106 had a single center bay that could be uh, subdivided by based on the weapons load. And we'll turn around here and let Bob tell you about the Ram Air Turbine here. So this is actually a little hydraulic motor that would be deployed on loss of uh, hydraulic power or electrical power. This is fed by the airstream coming across. 
and provides hydraulics to the flight control system and allows you to control the airplane until you restore uh, actual power to the aircraft. It you know, pops out of this enclosure up here. And it's nice that they have it uh, for us here as a uh, you know, look around. And I duck down and take us out here into the main landing gear. Uh, single, single wheel. It obviously breaks master cylinder, cross member that locks down. Come across in uh, the actual wheel well here, and you have the controls and linkage or controls, hydraulic lines, pneumatic lines, and everything that are continuing further aft in the aircraft. And you know, the engine is located right behind here. Yeah, I'm just going to give you another look around here. So what was different on the 106 versus the 102 uh, was this variable geometry uh, inlet into the engine. It allowed to put a much more uh, efficient and appropriate airflow into it, depending on flight speed. Also, if you look down the fuselage, it, uh, it uses what's called the area rule or a uh, wasp waste or coke bottle uh, uh, fuselage design that actually allowed for lower drag at transonic speeds and actually made the aircraft uh, uh, able to achieve faster speeds and more efficient. Another difference between the 106 and the 102 was the wings. The wings on the 106 are thinner, but they uh, go out further. And it's missing a uh, uh, fence here, a small fence that actually uh, helps trap air and keep it from cascading off the uh, edge of the, the wing there. So you'll see that it actually is a curved surface. And since it's a very thin wing, to actually uh, work the flaperons, you have uh, actual fairing here, it comes up and allows it to actually, you know, have control authority over the, the control surface. One of the things you'll notice too is that it's equipped with the 230 gallon drop tank. So that adds a total of 460 gallons to the, the aircraft. It is capable of in-air refueling. You'll see that up here on the, right above the air in Air Force. I'll get a good picture of that later with uh, my uh, extendable camera pole. And the next big difference on the 102 versus the 106 is the size and shape of the actual tail. It is uh, much broader and taller here than it is on the 102. And you can see the actual rudder inside here. And you can tell it's uh, only, what, uh, two thirds of the actual uh, trailing edge is a uh, rudder surface. So it's a J57 uh, afterburning turbojet. It consisted of a, and yeah, get a little closer here so I get the, the sun out and then bring that up. So it was a nine stage low pressure compressor, a seven stage high pressure compressor, I may have them backwards, but I think that's uh, it's 16 stages between the two. Then uh, feeds into the combustors, then to the low pressure, or correction, high pressure turbine, which is a single stage, and then to the low pressure turbine, which is a two stage. It's a coaxial, uh, the low pressure turbine drives the low pressure compressor, and the high pressure turbine drives the high pressure compressor. And then it is fitted with the uh, afterburner, to add more thrust. 
just pan around here a little more. So we have the speed brakes deployed and then the, the center portion right there is actually a drag chute that can uh, be deployed. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna take it, give you a nice, see if we can look inside and you can see how large the engine cavity is. And rotate around a little more. <clears throat> and it's fitted with a tail hook in case of, uh, you know, different casualties that would require that not being able to stop. But uh, at the end of all military runways, there's a, the capability of setting up an arresting cable. And move back a little bit here and give you a little better look again at the leading edge and how it is actually a conform, a nice uh, conformed shape down. And get back in here, close to the leading edge. Tricycle gear, the nose gear actually is kind of wonky in that uh, the steering for it is a thumb switch on the, there's a, the, the control yoke on here has actually two handles and the steering for it is actually located on the right hand one and allows the, the, uh, the pilot to use a thumb to steer the aircraft. And continue around here. And that's a nice look down at the uh, area rule of the uh, wasp waste or coke bottle uh, fuselage there. Okay, now that is our walk around of the uh, F-106.
Thanks for watching and for sticking around to the end. I truly appreciate all of your views, likes, comments, and especially for those who are returning subscribers to the channel. I especially like hearing from those who have first-hand experience with these aircraft, so keep the comments coming. I'd like to extend a special thanks to Sean Zawada and all of the staff at the McCord Air Museum for their work in restoring and keeping these amazing pieces of history available for future generations to enjoy.